Chicago's mayor and the Cook County State's attorney battle each other as gangs get off with no charges in a West Side shootout. That and much more in this week's edition of Spotlight Politics. Joining us now are Amanda Venicky, Heather Sharon, and Paris Schutz. Uh, so first team, we know Mayor Lightfoot, she calls out uh, Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox after no charges are filed in a West Side shootout. Here's what both of them had to say. We really urge the state's attorney herself to get personally involved, look at the evidence, um, and I believe that there are charges that can be brought at a minimum against the individuals who initiated the gunfire. We can't live in a world where there's no accountability. The statements that were made yesterday that were not factually accurate, should this case be ready for charging, may pose potential issues. Nobody wants that. Not for a political stunt. So, Heather, let's start with you. First of all, why no charges of any sort? No gun charges, no murder, no attempted murder. Well, this incident started uh, in uh, on a west side block in the Austin neighborhood where a car pulled up to a house and then apparently started firing into that house and people inside the house returned fire. It was an incredibly chaotic scene that was captured in part on city street cameras. However, that footage did not make it clear exactly who was shooting and who shot first. And that left detectives unable to recommend to Kim Fox's office about who should be charged and what they should be charged with, which was why I think Kim Fox was really angry when she heard the mayor said that it was her office's decision to not charge. When we heard directly from Chief of Detectives Brendan Dinahan during a city council budget hearing that the police agreed that there wasn't enough charges for anybody to be charged with. Now, the mayor then said, well, what do you mean there's not clarity? There was gunshots. Somebody's got to be charged with something. And that's really where we are at this point. This is just the latest conflagration between Mayor Lightfoot and State's Attorney Fox. We did learn today that the two plan to meet in the coming days to try to sort of talk this out and maybe smooth some ruffled feathers. But this has just become the latest flashpoint in the, really the increasing political narrative about gun violence and violent crime in Chicago. So Amanda, you know, the state's attorney yesterday, she said that she was, quote, mortified by the mayor's comments. Now we should, we all know the mayor herself is a former federal prosecutor. She too says that she heard from CPD and this was all based on what she had learned from them. But is it clear or uh, it's not clear actually, Amanda, what is it that is inaccurate of what the mayor said? What is clear about this situation, Brandis, is that this incident was horrific. I've seen it referred to as something out of the wild west. To me, um, it, it's really more like an an action movie that um, in in but in these really horrific ways because of course this is a neighborhood where children, where families, where people live, and then you have individuals getting out of a car, kneeling down, and I mean like in the sort of the, um, you know like they've got Charlie's Angels like stances, but. Po po shooting real guns that left somebody dead. So Kim Fox mortified, I am assuming also quite mad, incensed about this. Um, to me, it is also remarkable that it takes a back and forth such as this, considering how much finger pointing has been going on between these two leaders and their offices to have a meeting. Whoop dee, how are they not meeting regularly considering the level of violence that frankly, everyone should be mortified and horrified by um, in, in terms of what was inaccurate there. So I, again, we, as Heather noted, the chief of detectives had said, unclear, inconclusive, who started the shooting and therefore what sort of charges could be brought, but also pro potentially unclear what sort of strategies the prosecutor's office, and I think that is the, the point from which the mayor was perhaps approaching this from, how as a prosecutor's office, you wouldn't be able to press charges to at least lean on some of the individuals versus letting them be free in the streets and where critics say they can be free to and, pursue actions like this again. And Paris, you know, is is what Kim Fox is saying, you know, is she's calling this a political move by the mayor, is it? I mean, I, I can't deduce uh, what the motivation of the mayor is for saying that. It's clear that the mayor is facing re-election in less than two years, and, and crime in Chicago is going to be her Achilles heel. Opponents will run and say she hasn't done enough to 
to get crime reined in, and the mayor has had this consistent drumbeat of pointing fingers, first to the judges, the Cook County judges, and also to the state's attorney now. And I just have to reiterate, according to data from the Cook County judge's office that you know we talked about a couple months ago, the, the data doesn't really bear that out, that that's responsible for the spike. The data does bear that there's a certain percentage of folks that reoffend. They might be let out, and when they're out on bond or something, they reoffend. But the percentage of that has been the same, whether it was now, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So you can't say that that, from a, from a data perspective, is driving this spike, especially as we see this happening all across the nation. One of the deadliest years in America um, in, in, in a long time, and people say COVID and loss of jobs, anxiety, the availability of guns, those things probably do a little bit better to explain what's happening. So Chicago Police Superintendent David Brown, he also appeared before a city council hearing this week to defend the proposed budget, uh, which has been expanded to nearly $2 billion. Heather, aldermen say he ran a police force in the, quote, most dangerous city in America. Not exactly the friendliest crowd there. Uh, what happened during that meeting? It, it was a tense hearing where David Brown attempted to sort of say, this is our strategy going forward. And there were several aldermen who just were not have it. Um, I, I want to point out, though, that even though Alderman Matt O'Shea said that Chicago was the most dangerous city, Chicago is not the most dangerous city, really, by any metric. And I think what uh, some of the aldermen tried to sort of push back on is how do we address this image of Chicago as, as a you know very violent place when it's being reinforced forced by some of its elected leaders. And that is sort of the, the rock and the hard place that David Brown finds himself in. Yes, Chicago has a serious violence problem. It is not the most violent city in America, but it has significant challenges, not the least of which that there are nearly 1,000 vacant positions within the police department. And it is going to take a full court press by the city and the police department to try to get those positions filled at a time where police morale is low and interest among young people is low in joining the police department. So that is a big challenge. Also, the $1.9 billion budget, budget that the police department will have is really flat. It includes a significant pay bump for police officers who will get that raise under the contract that we've talked about on this show. Um, but there are no new programs. There are no new initiatives. It's really just sort of let's try to get a handle on this crime problem with what we have, but there are no easy solutions and nothing that the mayor or Superintendent Brown has done has really seemed to make any difference um, in the almost two year and a half that David Brown has been on the job. So in Paris, you know, Kim Fox has also slammed Superintendent Brown for his weekly press conferences that often blame her office and the courts uh, for criminals being on the streets perpetrating more crimes. Uh, Fox, you know, saying that the mayor does not have a comprehensive violence plan. Does she have a point or is she doing the same thing? Maybe a little bit of that. I mean, the mayor has come out with plans. The superintendent has talked about plans. The thing is, they haven't worked. So. <laughs> You know, I, I mean, all, all we see, it's reduced to, to finger pointing, but I'll go back to that point I made. You know, the data doesn't show that people being softly prosecuted and then going out reoffending is what's driving the spike. Certainly, it is a problem, as it always has been, reoffense, but, but there's just so many complex things happening right now to cause a spike, and no one has answers that work, I would say. So meanwhile, Chicago's wealthiest billionaire and civic donor, Ken Griffin, likens Chicago's violence to Afghanistan. Take a look. It's becoming ever more difficult to have this as our global headquarters, a city which has so much violence. I mean, Chicago is like Afghanistan on a good day. And that's a problem. I'll put this in black and white. I probably had 25 bullet shots in the glass window of the retail space in the building I live in. They tried to carjack the security detail that sits outside my house. That didn't go so well for the carjacker. <laughs> But it just tells you like how deep crime runs in this city. Oof. So Heather is a threat to yank his headquarters uh, enough to move the needle for politicians to do more to curb violence. Aren't they always focused on violence? Absolutely. Uh, Mayor Lightfoot, Governor Pritzker did not need any more reason to sort of be very focused on the violence problem in Chicago. I think that 
you know, the governor reacted quite sharply to Ken Griffin's statements, who he, of course, has funded Republican campaigns for many years now. Uh, and, and the fact of the matter is, as I said, said before, Chicago is not the most violent city, and it is not at all comparative to Afghanistan, where, of course, there is a literal war going on and an insurgency. So um, it's that kind of rhetoric that I think a lot of officials feel frustrated by while acknowledging that Chicago has a real problem Problem, this sort of sort of broad approach that we heard so frequently from President, former President Donald Trump doesn't really get to the heart of the issue, which, as Paris said, is really difficult to parse. It involves poverty. It involves a lack of investment. It involves a lack of jobs. And it is just not as simple as saying, um, either you stop the crime or I'm going to move my investment firm to New York. Can I, can I just quickly jump on some other comments he made that I found pretty interesting, unrelated? He, uh, he was asked about the $3.5 trillion federal spending plan uh, being debated in Washington right now. And he said his answer to that was, thank God for Joe Manchin. So obviously really opposed to that. And that might give you kind of a, a glimpse into the, the resistance uh, that some folks are feeling. Manchin and cinema, if, if um, Griffin's sentiments are reflective of you know, the top 1%, Wall Street hedge fund managers, but how they feel about that, perhaps that's one reason why this bill is having such a hard time getting full support. And Amanda, you know, we've got about 30 seconds, but Griffin also attacked, you know, Governor Pritzker. Pritzker, you know, we, as we know, he's clapped back on that. Real quick history on these two billionaires. Well, yeah, people say, why does Ken Griffin matter? It matters in part because of the reputation of Chicago, but also because as Pritzker is facing re-election, folks are really wondering who is Griffin going to back. As Pritzker pointed out, uh, Griffin was a big backer of Pritzker's predecessor, Bruce Rauner. Question is, as Republicans are searching really for a candidate that can win statewide support, who is going to have Ken Griffin's backing, a.k.a. his money, to go up against billionaire Pritzker? Well put and succinct. Thank you very much to Amanda Venicky, Heather Sharon, and Paris Schutz.